Thank you. Uh, we are recording this meeting for those who are not able to attend. Uh, as I said, this is our uh, camp meeting about the swimming program for this summer, uh, particularly as it pertains to instructional swim. We will also discuss some of the elements of the free swim as well. My name is Josh Goldstein. I am the Director of Camping Services at the JCC of Dallas. Uh, and tonight I have the pleasure of joining us, uh, Tori Gardner, uh, who's the Director of Aquatics. Um, and so without further ado and his team, we are going to uh, begin. So as I said, uh, we have to Tori Gardner joining us. He's our Aquatics Director. And we have, I don't know why it's doing that to me. That's fun. Um, we have Adriana Martinez, our LKSA Managing Director. Also on the Zoom uh, is Daniel Taylor, the General Manager of Sports and Fitness, and Dale Ayusa, the Camp Simcha Director. So uh, we will hear from Tori and Adriana for sure. And then uh, if Dale and Daniel need to chime in with anything, they will add stuff. Uh, so without further ado, sorry about all the different screens that are popping up. Uh, Tori and Adriana, please take it away. Oh, hold on. You're muted. Tori, come off mute. Can you can everybody hear me now? We're good now. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, my name is Tori Gardner. I'm the uh, aquatic director for the J. Um, just this will be my first summer. So um, I started at the end of last summer. So I got a chance to kind of see things winding down and how they were kind of tapering off at the end. Um, so I'm really looking forward to kind of getting things together this summer for everybody. Um, so we're going to um, have some, some differences uh, because we're getting ready to change our, our format and we're having meetings about that. Of course, you know, we've had the, over the last two years, we've had some COVID formats that we've been operating under and we're in the midst of trying to decide if we're gonna you know, do things differently and more, uh, hopefully more efficiently and effectively going forward. So um, we will be offering swim lessons and things like that. As you can see on the screen, Camp High and Little High will be getting swim lessons as well as uh, the other camp there. Um, they're four days a week in the outdoor pool, 25 minutes lessons um, from 9.30 to 10 will be the first group. Little High, which is the kindergarten, kindergarten is 11 to 11.30. Shalom, 11.30 to 12. And last one there, 12 to 12.30. Um, we're going to be focusing on, so with these lessons, they're an abridged um, format of what we offer in our LKSA program. Adriana will go in depth of what we offer there as far as the year-round lessons. Um, so the ages, we'll have three and three and fours. They must be potty trained. And if they're not potty trained, they'll be in our baby pool. First group at 10 o'clock, as you can see on the screen there, and the second group at 10.30. But just getting back to what we're going to focus on, we're going to be focusing on correct body position and proper alignment, um, lateral rotation. Um, learning the skills allows the swimmers to roll and breathe correctly, moving quickly and properly through the water. I know a lot of parents can say, my kid or my child can swim from one end of the pool to the other. It's usually a doggy paddle or something that's kind of um, more of a survival thing than a technically correct kind of stroke, which is what we're trying to focus on. And the last thing is be propulsion. So these are the skills that we're really going to focus on as far as like what we're going to do in this bridge part of the, uh, the LKSA program. So I'm going to turn it over to Adriani a little bit more now because she can tell you how our evaluations work and how we do things, uh, even a bridge the in the summer. So, um, with uh, LKSA, um, if they're not able to do um, the group lessons because of age-wise, um, then you have the um, opportunity to sign up for uh, private lessons. Um, and then with that, we actually have pickups and you can actually go pick up your child um, from camp and they'll be dressed and then we bring them down to the lesson. 
Um, and Adriana, I, just to, just to clarify that for everybody in terms of during the camp day, um, that would be for the the camp Simcha campers. Correct. I mean, it's open to everybody else too. So even if they are getting you know camp lessons and you you want your child to have that extra like private you know one on one um, with an instructor, you also have that you know um, opportunity as well. Um, but like Tori said, we do have um, evaluations as well. So that makes make sure that your your child is placed in the correct level within our program. Um, I'm sorry, what were you gonna say? Uh, no, I just wanted to for the for the camp high parents um, that uh, for having lessons after it's more after camp. So after that four o'clock hour, if they're in Simca and they're saying in the afternoon, just like if they're in preschool, they have it after that one o'clock and at 12:30 one o'clock hour. So um, just knowing what the different options are. Um, and those are additions to the program. So Camp Simcon, Camp High, except for the children that we already mentioned and their age groups, um, you know, that are not potty trained would be getting lessons as part of their camp curriculum. But we, of course, recommend, or if they aren't getting lessons, there's the option to do lessons through our year-round program, the LKSA program. Um, those, again, for Simca, if they're here in the afternoon or um, for Camp High uh, later in the afternoon for if they're staying for aftercare. Just wanted to clarify that. And sorry, I don't know if you want to carry on. Yes, please. <laughs> so uh, Adrian, I think you were going to talk about how how the evaluation at the beginning of each se session will work into leading into the swim groups, correct? Um, yes. Uh, so I believe they are um, done at obviously the beginning of um, that three, their first uh, session. Um, for I'm sorry, the beginning of each session, they are evaluated um, just to make sure that they are in the correct level within our program. Um, so the instructors will um, see what they're able to do in the water, um, whether it be, you know, they're already pretty comfortable, you know, putting the face in and they're comfortable with back float and you know, all of our instructors are trained in each and every level we have. So they'll be able to determine, um, you know, if they're going to be very beginner, still getting acclimated or, you know, they're a little bit more advanced and they already know how to backload on their own and able to self-save. And then as we go on, at the end of the session, we do another evaluation as well, right? Correct. So at the end of uh, that, your uh, each three week session, um, they'll be reevaluated re to see if they have progressed um, to the next level, or if we're still kind of working on some some skills and we need to maybe stick, if, especially if they're going to you know continue on uh, throughout the summer, uh, that they'll you know still continue working on that same level. And, and maybe before we do a dive, if even further dive into what the curriculum looks like, um, just maybe some realistic expectations that we can. Uh, I think of achieving in a three week period, considering um, we, it, you know, it's, it's four days a week of swim lessons, but that might get interrupted by a field trip one day, or uh, we might have a, a rain day, which interrupts. Uh, so, so just, you know, to make sure that all of our parents understand some of the realistic expectations within a three week session versus if someone was to be getting the swim lessons for nine weeks versus also the year round in the program. Yes, to, uh, to piggyback off of that, I want the parents to kind of understand that, you know, we're teaching these young individuals a sport and it's going the time is going to be divided up amongst other students. So it's not like uh, the LKSA program itself where they're receiving a private lesson and a one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be more so conducive to a, a larger group of individuals. So the time is going to be split. So I want everybody to have, like Josh said, a realistic expectation of what their, uh, their skill is going to be predicated upon whether they are three weeks six weeks or all nine weeks it's going to be you know a certain level of mastery that they have to get to and the reason we're going to focus on certain uh, foundational skills is that if they do enroll in the LKSA program those skills are conducive to the full uh, fledged uh, repertoire of the program and they'll have those skills kind of uh, be a little bit ahead of the curve let's just say that Thank you, Tori. Um, so 
what, I, what I, I think we'd love to do is, and I know Tori, you kind of mentioned this a little bit here at the beginning, but maybe do a little bit of a deep dive into what the curriculum looks like. And I've seen some questions in the chat and I promise we will get to those uh, here at the end, but I do wanna continue on this and then we ha will have an opportunity for questions uh, as well. So um, if we take a deeper dive a little bit into what the LKSA curriculum looks like. Um, well, it, it, it stresses literally like it's, it's not a traditional program where you go right into trying to master the strokes immediately. It stresses the water safety aspect of it in the beginning. So if a child was to mistakenly uh, be pushed or falls into the water at that lower level, they're taught to roll over on their back and kind of be able to float and protect themselves from drowning. So that's one of the things that, you know, it, it's very motivating and, and, and it, it encourages that safety aspect of it. So, I mean, there's, um, there's eight levels in the LKSA program. And again, these are all for the summer, they're abridged. Um, so we start off with splashers and the splashes are just kind of, it's just kind of water acclimation. It's for a kid that really hasn't been in the water too much and uh, it is just getting used to being in the water. Um, there's floaters and floaters are, yeah, there, there you go. Um, doing independent back float and things like that. Now, when I say back float, I want the parents to understand that. And even going back to the um, evaluation, there might be a situation where a, a student is borderline. We would prefer, well, let's say we evaluate them as a roller, as you can see as the fourth uh, level there, but you think they're a streamliner. We would rather put them in that roller level and have them master those skills and move up than to evaluate them as a streamliner, which they might barely be on the outside of. And I know I'm a parent, I have three kids, I want them to excel and I'm like, hey, if they're a streamliner, put them in that streamliner and that's where I want my child to be. But if they're on that cusp, we prefer to put them in a roller and have them excel and master those roller skills so then we can move them up to streamliner rather than put them in streamliner and they struggle and we have to move them back. Moving them back is always gonna be counterproductive. So we would you know, evaluate a child if you have what we call a cusper, we would put them in that lower level, so to speak, so they can master those skills. So again, like that back float thing that I was speaking of um, when it came to like the floater, that's a really, really important skill. So you might also, as a parent, look and say, hey, my child can do everything except for back float. Well, it is not just back float. If it's one particular skill that they can't do, it might really be intricate and important to the next level. So that's why we want to master every single skill at every level as best they can before they move up. And, and Tori, I, I, I think, and you and Adriana would also add the element that all of our instructors are, are, are excellent teachers at all the different levels. Correct. So, so if your child has mastered the majority of one level, but hasn't mastered everything to move on, the instructor is going to be able to continue to give them the elements of the next part of the next level, uh, if those others on those other skills, while they continue to master the next the one skill they need to move up, so that won't so being in a roller when they have a lot of elements of streamliner won't hinder their growth in some of those streamliner things. It's it, each step is built upon each other, and each instructor can do um, can do every single level. Yeah, the the instructors are. Um, incredibly versatile. So you can have a splasher teacher that can teach all the way up to flyer and a flyer teacher that can teach all the way down the splasher. So, you know, they're very interchangeable like that. And that's the, that's the advantage of the program. It also helps with a situation where you might have a sub or a, a switching of the teacher um, because of either growth or an absent, you know, situation where somebody's feeling ill or didn't make it to work that day. So that's kind of the advantage of the program and why, why it's set up so to be so successful. 
And I want to add, Josh, that um, over the years, we've also been very receptive to parents, you know, calling and emailing us and talking to us about their children's progress, especially if they've been in our program, but even if they've not been in our program and they're coming from another from program somewhere else, we want to hear from the parents and what their children are, what they believe their children are able to do. Additionally, for kids that are in our program, whether they're in our um, early childhood um, program for the Goldberg Early Childhood Center students going into SEMCA, or if they've been in the LKSA program and they're going into Camp High, um, we're going to have those levels. Adriana is going to provide that information and um, we're going to start matching them up before camp even starts. So we'll already have them pre evaluated in the levels that they're currently in. And I know, that's, I know we're going to get into questions, but I kind of like to jump into that ahead of time, knowing that um, that's a standard FAQ. <laughs> Absolutely. But before we do move on a little bit forward, I, I do want to go back to some of those foundation elements. And I know, Tori, you mentioned them er earlier, but I, I think this these are really three unbelievably key and unique, unique elements to our program uh, to, to understand what, what we're doing to make sure that uh, when you come to our pool and you learn to swim with us that you're going to be safe, you're going to gain skill, and that will allow you to have fun in the, the water, which is, you know, one of the main reasons that, that we all want to get in the water is to have a good time. So, Tori, I don't know if you want to go back over that, or Adriana, if you want to go back over that one more time. Um, I'm sorry. You can go ahead, Tori, if you want. No, um, it's just saying the correct body position and proper alignment. That's when you're actually swimming. Like I said, you know, a lot of times we look at our children and they swim across the pool, whether they're doggy paddling or, you know, they're doing what we call the blue singer, where their head is going back and forth. And, you know, it's, it's the correct body position and alignment to where the child is swimming in a streamlined and more efficient manner. The lateral rotation, it keeps them from raising their heads up proper swimming teaches you to breathe to the side. It's more efficient. You use less oxygen because you're using less muscle and it's more, it's, uh, more effortless. It takes less uh, sh uh, strain on your body to turn to breathe to the side. So the lateral rotation is teaching the child to literally roll and breathe properly. Uh, the propulsion, I mean, that's just pretty much the entire stroke. That's the kick, the pull, and those, those uh, steps are just um, put together to make a more efficient stroke. Um, the water safety aspect of it, again, is probably the most important at the lower levels. Again, we want the child to be able to protect themselves if accidents happen. Um, so that's one of those things where we will have a child jump in and independently roll over onto their back. And that's, um, you know, of course, at the end of a, of a level, at the beginning level, but in the beginning of it, we're teaching them how to roll over, how to get their stomachs out of the water and things like that. Excellent, thank, thank you so much. Um, and I'm gonna just keep moving forward here through it. So, um, and, and now really we've, we've come to the question part um, and, and we've received some already. So in the chat, I'll just read them to you, um, Tori and Adriana and, uh, and we'll go from there. So um, the, the, the first one was Tori and, and Adriana, would you both share kind of your own swimming backgrounds? Uh, you know, I, I think we kind of maybe glossed over that in the in the introduction period. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, I've Go been ahead. in aquatics since 2002. Um, I started off as a lifeguard and then worked my way up to uh, teaching. Um, I've taught at numerous places. Um, I used to live in Houston, um, different swim schools over there. Um, and then I've been here at the JCC for about two and a half years now. Awesome. And Tori? Um, well, I started swimming competitively at the age of six years old. Um, I swam from age six all the way to my sophomore year in college at 18. Uh, I was a city champion in the city of Chicago and a certain events, and I swam for a really good swim team. Uh, so like I said, I swam two years in college and I've been in aquatics management since I was 20, since I was 20 years old. So I've 26 years in, tw in, 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 um, aquatics management. I was also in the water as an instructor. I train lifeguards at this point in time. Um, so I've been a lifeguard instructor since 2000. So I've got 21 years as a lifeguard instructor. Um, so I mean, there's, there's not too much in aquatics that I haven't seen. 
Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Um, we, had, we had a question. It uh, was, if, if a parent has a child who can't swim yet without floaties, can they still attend uh, the, the, the camp? Uh, of, of course they can attend the camp. I, I get maybe if they, can they, would they still be allowed to go to, to the lesson? Um, and so uh, would love to, you know, hear, hear how we handle the, 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 sim, the three and four year old Simcha campers who might, might, their swimming might be with floaties at this time. I, I would like to just jump in on that one. Um, so yeah, obviously, um, one of the things I would recommend though too is that um, doing some instructional lessons before camp gets started um, and, and also working with, with them in the pool once you learn some of the skills and techniques, um, hopefully it's with us. Um, but uh, even if it's not, doing some, um, some introductions to the water without the floaties. Um, the floaties tend to be a, um, they're great, and I, I think there's a lot of great ones out there that we, I, would, I would certainly recommend for kids to have as another layer of safety, but there are some that are not great um, for body position and getting kids comfortable with their face in the water. So, um, but certainly it is something that we're going to work on them in camp. But if they're already acclimated before camp starts, it's going to be a big jump start for them. Because I'm going to tell you that I've seen summer after summer kids coming to our pool outside. It's, it's already an overwhelming experience just to be there um, on the first day of camp, some of them. And then the pool's big and they're meeting you, they're meeting the counselors, they're meeting their um, swim instructors. There's a lot of um, just getting to know yous and um, even just getting comfortable with the water and getting comfortable with the environment. It's going to take some time for some of those kiddos. So my recommendation is certainly to you know, try to jump ahead of that before the summer. But of course, we'll work with every child, no matter what their skill level is. And that foster's level, the very first level is going to be that introduction to water level. So if they are not comfortable yet in the water, that's where they will, they will be. Thank you, Daniel. Um, anything else to add on that for, for Tori and Adriana, or are we good to move to the next question? No, I think Daniel covered it. Excellent. Um, so then uh, one, another question was if we'll be sending out LKSA lesson information uh, to some of, to our camp families who would be interested in exploring that for prior to the summer. Um, and, and, and I know the answer there is yes. Uh, I'm trying to think of maybe Adrian had the best way for us to set that up here tonight. Um, best way usually just email, um, which I'm sure we can provide uh, to everybody uh, for camp. Yeah, so um, let me put your email in, in the chat um, to everyone. Um, and, and that way we have it. And, and so if you, if you email Adriana, and we'll leave it up there uh, for everyone to grab, she, she will get you all set up with, with, with all the initial process to, to get your initial class. Um, so another question we have, uh, how do kids come dressed? Should they show up to camp in swimsuits or do they change into them later? Um, I would definitely say for th those groups that are swimming right away, it, it, a lot of times we have those campers show up in their swimsuits uh, because then they don't have to change and they're not doing other activities at the beginning of the day before swimming. If you have some maybe older kids uh, who were swimming in those later time slots, it might be worth sending them in to different clothes and changing into it. We do have changing space and we do allow for changing time within our schedule. Uh, so it really kind of depends on the age of your child um, and uh, the time in which they're, they're, they're swimming. D Daniel, I don't know if on previous experience you have some input on that as well. Um, so the question was about what, what being ready, changed and ready to go for swim? Right, so if they should come to camp in their clothes or in their swim um, clothes or if they should change during the day for uh yeah for the first groups that are coming um you know they they might and the camp will advise uh if it's simca they might advise them to come dressed and ready just because they're going to be swimming you know earlier in the morning um the first uh high group 
um, Javi Reem, usually they some, you know, they're the first ones in the pool in the morning. So it may be easier if they're already in their suits, but um, I think that's some direction that the um, camp staff will have to give. But I, I because it's, we've, because we've had two years of COVID um, <laughs> uh, uh, set up, I, I don't remember uh, if they did or if they did not. And sorry about the distraction there. The, we had a question about, so that you could see the schedule again. I'm just going back through the presentation to get back to that slide. Um, so I will make sure that that's up for everyone to take a look at, um, which, um, so for, for, if you have someone who is entering first grade, that would mean they're in the Chave Reem group. I would recommend that they could come in their swim suit, uh, that they swim from nine 30 to 10. Um, then the sim, the two Simcha groups, it would typically, it might make sense. Um, and that might be something good that you check, um, in the days leading up, you could check with their counselor about what, what they plan to do. Do they want to have everybody change at the same time or would it be more helpful? And we'll make sure that you guys have the opportunity um, to kind of have some of those conversations with the, with the counselors, you know, for the summer. Um, I believe what a lot of kids did, Josh, and, and it's kind of coming back to me is that they did have their suits usually on like underneath or like for boys, they have like their trunks as shorts and then shirts and then they have their change of clothes for the rest of the day um, in their bag. I do think it does save time, um, certainly, and, and as everyone can see, uh, our timing is, is tight for camp, um, so getting a lot of kids in and out of the pool, you know, throughout the day. Um, and yeah, and I'd say Lil Chai, that would work as well, and then kind of, it, it might be hit or miss there with the Shalom or Yibarim age groups, they're a little bit later in the day, they're doing some activities early in the day, and they're a little bit older and, and have the uh, you know, their, their changing skills might be more efficient. Uh, so they may be, you know, that might be more, the, you know, your choice with them versus, uh, you know, what we advise depending on, on each child. Um, Erica, gr great question there on free swim. Uh, so free swim will happen in the afternoon for um, the Chave Rim group, the Shalom group, and the Giba Rim group uh, every day of the week. Uh, and then uh, we, we look into doing a one day a week of a, a really heavily supervised free swim for Lil Chai, our kindergartners. Uh, free swim is not an opportunity for our Simcha campers. Additionally, if you send a camper to um, sports camp, tennis camp, gymnastics camp, or teen travel camp, uh, they have free swim uh, in the afternoon uh, as well. And one, one thing that, and uh, Tori can go into this, that we've discussed is making sure that we do an evaluation of all those campers who are not in uh, high or, or Camp High to make sure, um, uh, to, to make sure that they're, they're swimming in the right area of the pool. So that if they show the, the, their ability to swing, swim, uh, that they could go to the deep end during the free swim. And if they should, don't have that ability yet, uh, that they would stay in the shallow end where they can stand and, and stay safe. And we uh, really work hard. Uh, not only do we have fantastic lifeguards all around the pool paying very close attention, but we train our counselors that they need to be uh, it, in and around the pool with all of our campers uh, during free swim so that we have uh, supervision on the campers at all times. Uh, and, and Daniel and Tori can really go into this as well, if, but they, there's a great oper, there's just a really big stress on the safety element of being in the pool. We, we, we know it's some of the most fun for our campers, but it's all about being the safest for our counselors, our lifeguards and our directors. Um, question about hanging the bathing suit or towel. Uh, so what we've, uh, you know, that is a great question. And, and honestly, having previously been the sports camp director and not with Camp Chai, I don't have the answer of what they've done. I do know that they have not been able to hang them uh, anywhere. So it's very possible that they were placed in a plastic bag and, and, and re put on and reused, but uh, let, let me find out some more information on that and I will get back to you for sure. The question was if the, 
if the campers can hang their bathing suit and towel somewhere after the morning to reuse for their afternoon free swim. We have, now I don't know how accessible it is going to be to the younger children as far as we have swimsuit dryers, but I'm pretty sure that would probably fall on the counselor or the adult who's supervising each group to find time or, you know, some kind of system to dry suits. So yeah, I would, I would leave that up to you, Josh, trying to find out more information on that. I think it's a, I think it's a logistical challenge and I think it's something that we'll talk about internally and uh, see if we can, um, you know, we can come up with something um, where we can hang or, or do something with the suits, but it certainly is uh, with that many children and that many suits and now that many towels, it, it is a, a logistical challenge. I'm, I'm going to stop my share now. Um, um, just going to go back to that just because of preschool students. Um, I know um, there's some preschool students that have their group, their group class in the mornings right now, and then they do the private lesson in the afternoon. A lot of the times, um, parents would pack two swimsuits, um, so they're not having to put on a wet suit. Um, if we can't, you know, obviously we don't have a, an answer for the uh, hanging, hanging the suit. That's another option we can possibly do as well. Well, I, I wanna thank everyone for, for coming on and spending some time with us tonight. I know everybody has busy schedules, uh, but uh, really glad that we got to have this conversation. Um, if, if there are more questions, uh, I'll hang around here for just a minute or so. Um, feel free to put them in the chat or unmute yourself and, and let us know. But um, really excited that we did this and, and hopefully this gave you some good insight into our swim program as it pertains to uh, Camp Simcha, Camp Chai, and, and uh, the year-round program uh, that LKSA is.